Hello, 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 my loves, and welcome to my 2023 predictions video. Hey! So I'm doing this video a little bit differently. I'm going to be getting ready while we talk about 2023. So it's going to be a chill hangout video. So kick back, relax, grab you a drink, and let's talk about how 2023 is a whole new bitch, okay? In a lot of different ways. You don't want to miss this. Also, in case you missed it, I have uploaded your horoscope for your rising sign for 2023. So if you would like a horoscope specifically for your rising sign, you can check that out. I also do 2023 year ahead readings that you can book on my website for you personally. So you can check that out down below. And I did one of these last year in 2022. If you never saw it, go, definitely go check it out because I was pretty freaking accurate. If I do say so myself, okay, I got a lot right. So if you would like to go check that out, you still can. And before we get into it, let's recap 2022, boo, because it was... It was a year, okay? It was a year. <laughs> so 2022 was incredibly dualistic. It brought a lot of duality, a lot of polarity. We were really learning, like a lot of the things that I noticed was like getting out of complex messy, chaotic attachments and situations in our lives and moving towards something that is more simple, stable, and secure. I also saw a lot of themes of getting out of survival mode, girl, because it was like... Damn, like the survival mode themes were so heavy, like in the scarcity themes, the lack themes of like seeing where we live in lack, where we live in scarcity, where it's like never enough, you know, and where we've been in survival mode and have these like attachments, like these toxic ass attachments to survival mode, you know, and living in lack, yada, 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 where we have attachments to chaos and chaotic situations and toxic situations. It also showed us our dreams, okay? I saw a lot in terms of dreaming big and, you know, revealing you know, our dreams and going after our dreams with a lot of the Jupiter and Pisces transit. I saw a ton coming up with divine feminine energy. I know I had like my whole divine feminine awakening uh, in 2022 and did a whole, you know, ton of programs on it. But my main signature program was goddess mode, which is still to this day, like the best thing I've ever created and was so life changing for so many. There's a huge, 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 you know, divine feminine theme. And I think that was a lot of the Taurian and maybe even like the Pisces themes that we had in 2022. Quantum leaps and quantum manifestation, quantum anything was a huge, huge deal. Lots of themes around that. There was a ton coming up with like our past self versus our future self or scarcity versus abundance. And, you know, abundance was a really big theme, money and, you know, manifesting money and money coaches and money mentors and money mindset, you know, another really big thing in 2022. But overall, we were really looking for a way to make our lives more steady, more consistent, more stable, and more secure while we were getting out of lack, scarcity, and instability. And so I think that was like, that's the big lesson of 2022. I think overall for, for many people are the big overarching theme. And if you are finding that you're dealing with difficulty doing that, it could be because you're holding on or attached to, you know, chaotic, toxic, messy, unstable situations, and you're being pushed towards simplifying things, you know, getting in a more stable, secure, beautiful, fulfilling, pleasurable state and slowing down rather than speeding up. And that's a whole nother thing. Slowing down was huge in 2022. I heard that a lot. And I myself was, you know, constantly got like intuitive guidance to slow down and soften and lean into pleasure and just all of this stuff with the Taurus North Node. So let me know if you noticed any of these themes down below in 2022. I love to hear about it. And with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the 2023 predictions, boo. Hello, darlings. Welcome to ow. <laughs> Welcome to the 2023 predictions. Let's go ahead and get into this. I'm sure I did like an intro or something of the sort. We are going to be doing my makeup while we talk about it so we can hang out, girlies and boys. Okay, so I'm going to be doing my eyeshadow. I'm going to link all of my products below in case you are interested. Okay, so 2023 is not coming to play. She is a whole new bitch, but it may not feel that way until March. March 2023 is where everything really kicks off and it literally feels like we are in a whole different world, dimension, whatever. Like full speed ahead is going to be going down in March. So just brace yourselves. Make sure you have a drink, a snack, like hang out with me. We are not being all like 
da -da 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 in this video, if you know what I mean. Like, we're just chilling, we're having a good time, hanging with our internet friends, your astrology internet girl over here. So just chill, okay? Fucking chill. Slow the fuck down. The North Node's still in Taurus, okay? 2023 comes with a lot of really interesting and really big changes that will last for a long time. This is the year where like we kind of finally get away from that 2020 energy because like let's just face it like the last three years have basically been like on repeat from 2020. Like 2022 was a little better but it's still kind of in the same in the same boat as 2020. And so we're finally kind of gonna feel like we are somewhat getting out of 2020 and 2023. One of the biggest things that I have written down here in my handy dandy notebook for this year is that a theme I'm really noticing is there's going to be a lot coming up in 2023 in terms of the individual. What the fuck does that mean? That means like you, okay? Me, like what I want to do with my life, what you want to do with your life. We're going to be very self focused and we're going to be really finding our individuality and 2023 is also so much about taking action and fucking initiating like getting up off your ass and fucking going and stop waiting we're gonna have a shit ton going on with the sign of aries and that is why i'm saying that but also we're gonna have some themes of the mystical ethereal zodiac signs of aquarius and pisces which can deal with equality and oneness and sameness and things like that so i really feel here that it's like going to be very much about the individual versus the collective especially once we get to march and then even more so once we get to july and the nodes shift into aries and libra this is going to be a year where it's not going to so much be about other people and their feelings and their wants and all of that like there is going to be some lessons and empathy and you know seeing other people's sides and things like that but that is not the direction collectively that we are being pushed in we are being pushed in a direction of like focus on you boo do you boo like start fucking doing the damn thing and stop waiting for other people to tell you to you know like stop waiting on permission from everybody else stop focusing so much on everybody else and start doing your own damn thing basically and so that is really the energy of 2023 but again we're not going to be feeling that until like later on in 2023 and we're also going to be feeling that into 2024 because a lot of these transits are going to be going on in 2024 as well so one of the like big dog transits that we have for 2023 is saturn and pisces and i'm not gonna lie like <laughs> i don't know about this okay because i have not like lived through and been an astrologer at the same time as saturn and pisces transit okay the last time this happened was when i was like very very young because I have Saturn in Aquarius, so, you know, I just went through my Saturn return. So if you're a Saturn in Pisces, be prepared because your Saturn return is here, honey. It is coming this year. Uh, so the last time that this happened, though, was like in the 90s and I was super little. So like I was not like consciously aware at the time to be able to like look for what all this could bring, you know. But I've done some research, obviously, and came up with some of my own kind of opinions. And honestly, you guys, I'm a little bit, I'm a little scared for this to be all the way real with you because uh, there is like a real but imaginative theme. And so this can really bring the imagination to real life, like things that we may have thought were imaginary. Nope, they're real. And also this can bring a sense of bringing our dreams to reality, but also bursting our bubble in a lot of other areas, like basically ripping off the rose colored glasses of maybe old dreams that we once had. Um, this could also, <laughs> this could also be kind of a restriction of some sort or even a censorship of some sort on spirituality certain ideologies you know certain faith-based belief systems or people that follow them that is what i am most worried about because with jupiter and pisces we've seen a huge surge in spiritual healers spiritual coaches you know spiritual mentors gurus etc 
And I feel like Saturn is going to expose maybe some fakeness or fraudulence in some of these areas as well. And also with certain maybe like religions or ideologies that people follow. But I'm also worried that it could play out where there is a restriction or a censorship that starts happening on these different faith-based you know, communities, crowds, etc. Like, and so that is what I am most worried about for this, honestly. We could also see a rise or an epidemic that starts with escapism in some way. So this could be drugs, this could be new inventions that help you escape reality. We're going to see a lot of like really mystical, dreamy, maybe even like fantasy worlds that kind of come to life. And so this could be a lot of virtual reality type inventions. Now, Saturn in Pisces, by the way, I forgot to mention, is going to be in Pisces for three years, okay? So this is not like just a short-term thing, okay? It's gonna be in Pisces for the next few years. So everything that I'm saying right now about Saturn and Pisces, I'm not just talking about 2023, I'm talking about the next three years. So we may not see all of this in 2023, but we could see the start of a lot of it, definitely. I do think that this could be even getting serious about spirituality for like a lot of people. But again, it's bringing this Saturnian spiritual tone to this like dreamy, watery, spiritual, healing, all is one Pisces energy. So there's going to be a lot of like questioning belief systems, questioning religions, questioning ideologies, questioning like what's real and what's not. And I feel like that's really going to continue. And Saturn is going to also show us what is not, <laughs> what is not real. It's definitely going to rip off the band-aid or the rose colored glasses and the unveiling because like in the past Saturn and Pisces has kind of coincided with the unveiling of, of certain corruption in government and you know society the distrust really of people in power and I do feel like people in power is going to be a very big topic <laughs> over these next several years because Pluto is going to enter Aquarius, which we're going to get to in a minute. Don't worry. Saturn and Pisces can also bring like legendary, you know, works of art, legendary creations, like the construction of all these different worlds, fantasy worlds, you know, things that are kind of fiction based worlds that help us escape. But again, it could also be bringing this really realistic tone to things that we thought were imaginary, like things that we thought could never happen or wouldn't be true. It's like, oh no, this is happening. And Pisces is a sign that really deals with our connection to all like oneness. And so it really is bringing in kind of this this theme of oneness. Now, whether that is in a very reality check kind of way, like, hey, we're all connected in this weird way, or whether that is almost like disconnecting us because Saturn can be like separation, you know? And so I'm kind of worried about the latter of Saturn kind of disconnecting us even more than we already are. And then with all this Aries energy, we're going to be very self-focused. Like I said, the individual is going to be the prime focus you know, especially halfway through 2023, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. So I definitely think it's going to be the, you know, construction of these different realities or these like fake worlds, but also possibly the consequences of that, like possibly the consequences of escapism, the consequences of things, right? And I do believe Saturn was in Pisces, for the invention of LSD. So I definitely, definitely think we could see something happening in terms of psychedelics. Maybe, maybe they get legalized or maybe not. You know, I could see Saturn doing that. But again, it could go either way where there is like a, an oppression of spiritual based practices and ideologies or it could be setting it in stone in some way or exposing things in some way or legalizing things you know it's it's Saturn and Pisces is making the unreal real okay and that can go a lot of different ways that can get pretty messed up at times but I mean if it's real then it's real what can you fucking say about it right like so but I am all for psychedelics getting legalized like that would be absolutely amazing uh in more places obviously because I know they somewhat are in certain places doing my wing while speaking right now is not freaking working, honey. 
is not working at all oh my god this is horrible okay hopefully this is fucking even but yeah anyway so saturn and pisces is basically like the loss of illusions it is kind of you know going to possibly test our faith test our beliefs especially our beliefs in something bigger than ourselves and so we could definitely see that coming up with Saturn and Pisces. It's going to expose fraud and, you know, spiritual spiritual communities or religious communities. And it's gonna be pretty interesting. I am a little bit scared though, because I'm not sure how far it's gonna go in terms of spiritual communities. But I also think that it's going to be a time where we are really questioning our beliefs and where our beliefs get tested, especially our beliefs in the all and oneness, the universe god the goddess ourselves you know buddha buddha <laughs> you know the whole shebang so okay so we are going to move on to jupiter and taurus so jupiter and taurus i am excited for so the first few months of 2023 until like may jupiter is going to be an aries so let's talk about that first let's talk about jupiter and aries first so jupiter and aries is really going to bring up a ton of focus towards the individual. So it kind of starts here with this whole, you know, individual story that we have going on, where we are really focused on ourselves and our individual progression and growth, and how we can make a difference or the actions that we need to start taking, the moves that we need to start making, the big moves that we want to make. And it's really kind of pushing us to really focus on ourselves and learn how to like grow and expand and evolve ourselves. Then in May, Jupiter is going to move into the sign of Taurus. This is going to be a really big deal because Uranus is in Taurus and Uranus has been in Taurus for several years now, like shaking shit up. And the North Node uh, has also been in Taurus all through 2022 and so this is gonna be really interesting okay we're gonna like notice a massive push towards taurian energy and i don't know about you but i've already noticed a huge push towards taurian energy in 2022 slowing down enjoying life you know having more uh simplistic and pleasurable ideologies like ideologies that actually have value around living a good life around abundance around expansion around growth around living an abundant and pleasurable life passive income money there's like all these like money gurus that i've seen in uh 2022 i even did a whole like program on money manifestation because i had some crazy success uh, with money manifestation in 2022. So we're going to see kind of like a continuance of that, but like even bigger starting in May in 2023, where we are really noticing like big ideologies surrounding money and finances and this push to get out of scarcity and lack. Okay, this massive push to change our belief systems in terms of money and abundance in the world, in terms of pleasure, in terms of living a pleasurable and fulfilling life and, you know, living in luxury or living a life that like gives us some kind of financial freedom. Like, you know, Uranus is very much about freedom. And for some people it may not be financial, for some people it may be freedom in terms of where you live or what you own or the property that you own or what you have of value, you know, like that's really what it is. Like what is a value in your life and what do you want a value in your life, right? Like, and that's really been the big question here in 2022, the year that just passed because we've been very, like we've been very pushed out of this like scarcity, lack, you know, mindset and really seeing like where we live in survival mode. Like I know a lot of people have been seeing that or even at the very basic level where your life is super complex, right? Like where you live this super complex life or you have attachments to like chaotic, unhealthy, toxic shit that is like not actually bringing anything to your life. And so... 2023 is going to be a continuance of that 
but on a major, major level starting in May. So just be prepared because from May forward, there's going to be this massive, massive like momentum that kicks in of progressing our lives for more security, more stability, like more um, simplicity, right? Like more value. Like how can we bring more value? How can we cut out more of this chaos, cut out more of what just is not bringing us a sense of stability or security, like that's not bringing us a sense of abundance, pleasure, fulfillment. There's going to be a massive push towards slowing down and actually enjoying life instead of needing it to be so up and down and complex and chaotic with the South Node in Scorpio. And we've already noticed that, you know, we, like we've already noticed some of these themes in 2022. Like that was a lot of like the lessons we've been learning in 2022. So a lot of people are going to be like learning and believing in ideologies that really bring more value to their lives, that really bring more abundance, more expansiveness, more belief in, you know, expanding and growing in terms of wealth, abundance, living a more pleasurable life. Like that is going to continue. We're going to see massive themes of passive income, you know, we and that started as well in 2022. Learning how to really like solidify your life in a more in a more simplistic but pleasurable way to keep the momentum going and to keep things stable we're going to be thinking very differently about what's of value in our lives and what is actually going to bring us material pleasurable fulfillment in terms of our lifestyle and eventually you know like it's jupiter is going to conjunct uranus in Taurus, which is going to bring massive progressions and inventions, dealing with food, our resources, money, natural resources. It's going to bring cultural trends and probably inventions that are geared towards more convenience, which could be a great thing and it could be not so great thing because it could could bring things that are imitations of something real and that are actually like you know, versions of something real that come with its own problems, if that makes sense. So just wanted to say that. So let's talk Pluto and Aquarius, boo, because this one is like, <laughs> it could go a few different ways. And I'm just gonna be real with you, okay? I'm not trying to fear monger here, but Pluto and Aquarius is, I don't know, after having Saturn in Aquarius and Saturn rules Aquarius for like the last few years, I'm kind of like, ooh, Pluto and Aquarius. <laughs> It could be a dystopian nightmare or it could be the progression of a utopia. You know, like I, I don't know. But either way, it's going to bring up some very interesting and powerful things in terms of technology. Like we are looking at massive levels of transformation and changes in technology. We are looking at massive changes in science and experimentation. It's honestly a little bit scary, not gonna lie. I could also see like if it got really dark, it could be like depopulation. I think we're definitely gonna see kind of this like technocracy, you know, possibly like freak experimentation, you know. Aquarius is a weird sign and Pluto is a dark planet, okay? So we could see power to the people or power to control the people. And you know, this is happening in March, like Pluto is gonna dip into Aquarius in March, but it's only gonna stay till May in 2023. So we're only gonna get a taste okay it's not gonna move all the way in until 2024 and then it's gonna stay there for like 20 years either way though pluto deals with disruption chaos control manipulation power you know things like that and it's in a very social sign like aquarius is a very social sign that deals with groups of people and society at large the people right and so we have a very dark planet you know so again it could be power to the people or power of control over the people i definitely could see you know massive revolutions and technology and science obviously biology like like pushing biology to extremes pushing these things to extremes because pluto can rule over extremes um and again i think it's interesting that with the first round of pluto dipping into aquarius and then retrograding back we're also going to have saturn and pisces which is also unrealistic you know thing that's like hitting hard then we're also going to have this massive aries energy starting this year later this year and so i really feel like you know there's going to be a massive massive push to the individual there could be kind of this conflict between oneness and sameness versus the individual like you know because there are people out there that like want everything to be the same and 
everyone to be the same. And that's just not freaking realistic. Like there's beauty in differences. There's beauty in individuality. And Venus is going to retrograde in Leo actually um, later in 2023 from July 22nd until probably like September. Uh, so we're going to have kind of this you know, interesting story happening with beauty being seen in individuality and in our identity and in how we express ourselves. And then the North Node is going to be in Aries in July. So we're also going to be having this push towards being independent and, you know, standing up for what we believe in and doing what we want and being self-focused and, you know, taking action and taking initiative and making big, bold moves. And so I really think that, I think that that's interesting how it's all aligning on the same year that Pluto first dips into Aquarius, which could definitely be this like kind of dystopian, uh, takeover where power and control and manipulation and dark shit starts kind of weaving its way into society and, uh, you know, social systems and things like that. Like, I could definitely basically see uh, the government, you know, like trying to push itself even farther on controlling the people, controlling our money more, controlling who we are and trying to put everybody on this like same level when it's bullshit. Like, I'm sorry, it's bullshit. I don't agree with it. But yeah, and I could see science being taken way too far, you know, and used to control people, kind of like it was with Saturn and Aquarius the last couple of years. But yeah, so it's it could go a lot of different ways, but it could also be power to more people. And honestly, it could go all of these ways. Like it doesn't have to just be one side or the other. There could be beautiful things that come from this. There will be technological inventions like out the yin yang, right? Like there will be massive futuristic progress progressions in our society and within our structures and within technology and within science and biology and you know like all of this different stuff like we're going to see some really crazy insane stuff and progressions in the world but with it being Pluto there definitely can be a dark side or a hidden side and there can be manipulation and power and control that are weaved into these inventions or that have you know that these inventions are intended for and so we do have to kind of watch for that and um yeah I don't want to fear monger but it's just the honest truth like Pluto and Aquarius in the past has brought massive revolutions in society it's brought major progressions in the structures and societal systems that are in place uh, but there's also been like a darker side to that uh, and it can call it can bring a lot of you know power and control and greed and things like that that come with it i definitely see like there being a distrust that grows even further in terms of those that are in power uh over the next you know over this year but over the next several years so anyways so the other thing that i want to talk about is the nodes moving into aries and libra okay so the north node is going to be in aries again we're going to have this very forward action oriented like self-focused aries energy so once that happens in july when the nodes move in july we are definitely going to see a decrease in relationships and more lessons surrounding doing things for ourselves, doing things because we want to, doing things because we desire to, taking action, taking initiative, like actually, you know, walking the fucking talk instead of trying to please everybody or trying to be overly considerate or, you know, dealing like trying, worrying about what other people think, comparing ourselves to other people. There's going to be like a huge, huge push for individuality and realness and uh, doing what you love and and getting what you desire because you fucking deserve it. You know, with Jupiter and Taurus, like there's going to be a massive uh, push to challenge ourselves, to face fears, to go after what we want and to take action on what we want and to initiate things, to be more assertive, right? We're going to see huge themes of competition. We're going to see possibly a lot coming up after July in terms of maybe guns and individual rights and things like that. And we're also going to be really wanting to like challenge ourselves and be the pioneer in something. So we're going to see things like that too. But we could also notice that we are a lot more impatient, uh, that we are a lot more, that we get frustrated a lot more if things don't go our way. Um, and, you know, we may be scared to go after what we want because we may be considering other people's thoughts too much. We may be people pleasing too much. We may be 
um, scared of confrontation, right? Uh, we may be scared to be impulsive, but that is where we're being pushed to. We're being pushed to act rather than think so much and try to get along with everybody so much. So there's going to be a lot in terms of relationships that comes up in 2023 because the South Node is going to be in Libra. So we're really going to be having a massive decrease in terms of relationships. And um, it doesn't mean like everybody in the world is going to break up, but there could be a lot of breakups or there could be a lot less of a focus on our relationships. Like we're really noticing that like we're focused on us. Like we're focused on what we desire. We're focused on what we want. Um, and again, this is not going to be until like July, uh, but we're going to be focused on like being more decisive and stop like being on the fence or waiting around for what other people are going to think about it. Like there's going to be an increase in conflict because of this, right? Because with the South Node in Libra, Libra is very much about finding the peace and keeping the balance to avoid conflict, right? And to be fair. And so there's going to be a decrease in that. We're not going to care so much about what's fair or what everybody else wants. Like we're going to be pushed to be more self-focused, but this is the direction universally that we are being pushed in as a collective. So it doesn't mean anything good or bad. It's just like, hey, focus more on you, focus more on your shit, take action. Like, like don't be afraid of conflict, you know, face your fears, right? Like don't be afraid to put it all out there. Don't You don't have to be so diplomatic. You don't have to be the people pleaser. You don't have to look at all sides or be the peacemaker all the time. So I think that, you know, we're not going to care as much about how we come across or how we articulate ourselves. And we're going to be a lot more self-focused with the North Node moving into Aries. So that's going to be very interesting when that happens. I'm really interested to see how that goes. I think there's also going to be major themes of independence and independence and autonomy and sovereignty, especially in terms of who we are and what we own and how much of what we own is attached to who we think we are. Because we're going to have the North Node moving in Taurus, or I'm sorry, the North Node moving into Aries and Jupiter and Aries before that. And then Jupiter is going to move into Taurus. And the node's going to move into Aries. And so there's going to be this focus on Aries and Taurus, right? And so we're going to be very much focused on I, the individual, like what I want, what I need, like my resources. And, you know, with Taurus, it's very much our resources and our lifestyle and what brings us pleasure, money, earthly material things. And so, yeah, I think that it's going to be a massive focus on the individual and what the individual needs and the individual desires and things like that uh, for some reason or another, like how the individual can progress itself in terms of material assets and what it creates in the world, right? Because Taurus is ruled by Venus. So it's very much about what we create, the stability and the security and the luxury and the abundance, the growth, the expansion, the fulfillment that we create. And so I also feel like for that reason, it's going to be a very creative year. And then on top of that, we're going to have, you know, like I said, the South Node in Libra, which is going to be a massive letting go, learning lessons in terms of relationships, codependency, how much of our identity is wrapped up in other people, how other people influence how we think about ourselves or who we think we are and how much we try to like compromise or give in or feel like we need to people please or think about what other people think all the time about us, right? So we're going to be really getting away from that. And we're going to be really moving towards like what we desire and taking action, like not thinking so much and just acting and like doing what we want to do and making the moves that we want to make. And last but not least, like I said, Venus is going to retrograde uh, July 22nd. And this happened last um, around July to September 2015. So if you remember what was going on in your life that time, those similar themes or even people from that time or situations from that time could suddenly come back up um, around July and August and September of 2023 when Venus is in Leo and goes retrograde. So I think this is going to be a lot about reflecting on our identity, on our passions, on what brings us joy, what makes our heart thrive, reflecting on our individuality and ourselves and, um, you know, the passion, fun and vitality within our relationships, what we like, what we dislike, how much passion and, you know, desire that we actually have in our lives at that time. And again, it's going to be very much a reflection on our own individuality and our self-expression in the world. So 
So that is what I'm seeing for 2023, you guys. Hopefully you got something from this. Hopefully uh, this was entertaining at the least. <laughs> I don't know. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate it. Comment down below. Let me know if you stayed through the whole way. If you did, you are a badass. And let me know if there's any other videos that you want to see from me. Happy 2023. I love you. And I will see you in the next one. Also, uh, if you want a 2023 year ahead personal reading, you can book down below. I also do just normal natal chart readings. And then I also have a Patreon. If you want to get exclusive uh, videos and content from me every week, see the description below. I also do my astrology course over there that you can still sign up for. So anyways, I love you.